Today we are going to talk about the bark beetle and its effect on California's forests and certain economic and environmental impacts it has had on our state in recent years. As of 2016, over 100 million California conifers, which includes redwoods, ponderosa pines, and lodgeball pines, have been decimated by the growing population of bark beetles found within our state. These native beetles, which are often confused to be invasive, are largely affecting forests found in the northern reaches of California, Sierra Nevada mountains, and coastal and inland mountain ranges due to certain recent environmental impacts that has spurred their exponential growth. The way a bark beetle attacks and kills a tree is initiated by the female beetle who begins to bore into the bark of a tree while simultaneously releasing pheromones attracting more and more beetles to the host tree. This process continues as the newly arrived beetles begin to lay eggs within the bark of the tree, eventually leading the larva and the full-grown beetles within the span of one year, taking residence within the host while overwhelming its natural defenses, turning a perfectly healthy tree to a succumbed, infested, dried-out pile of waste over the course of four seasons. It's hard to imagine such tiny creatures, no bigger than a grain of rice, can kill such a giant as a redwood tree. So how do bark beetles kill trees? To start off with, bark beetles feed primarily on the inner bark of the tree, also known as the phylum tissue. This has the same effect as griddling where the beetle peels off the bark to the exposed wood of the tree. Damage caused by their feeding acts as an internal tourniquet cutting off the flow of nutrients from the leaves to other parts of the tree. As the damage progresses, sugars and other complex compounds cannot be translocated downward from the leaves to non-photosynthetic areas of the tree. The beetle also introduces a blue stain fungus which grows into the wood, more specifically called the xylem. The fungus prevents water from being transported upward to the leaves and function as food for larvae to feed on after the fungus breaks down the xylem inside the tree when they hatch. So what is tree mortality and the factors that have caused tree mortality rates to increase because of the bark beetle infestation? According to the US Forest Service, tree mortality refers to the death of forest trees and provides a measure of a forest's health. The current level of bark beetles has resulted from a combination of natural factors and human activity factors. To start off with, drought is one natural factor and a human factor, which, as it implies, causes trees to weaken significantly and become targets for the bark beetles. Another major factor is fire suppression. It is a human activity factor that is unnatural to forests. Planes fly over an area in a forest and spread fire retardant chemicals that allows dying or dead trees to become breeding grounds for bark beetles to grow in numbers. Pollution, pollution in general is a major factor for the infestation of the bark beetle. Air pollutants and chemicals that are released and dumped illegally affect many trees' immunity to fight back against foreign entities such as the bark beetle. These factors all influence the amount of water, light, and nutrients available to individual trees in the forest. Trees not receiving enough of these resources, such as water, become stressed. Bark beetles can detect stressed, susceptible trees and they respond by colonizing it and effectively removing it from the population. Although it's hard to imagine, these tiny beetles do have a huge impact on California's environment and economy. Many of California's greatest forests are being affected by these little guys, creating a serious issue within California. As one can imagine, the bark beetle's effects on the environment are very disastrous, especially during the drier times in the summer. As reported by the U.S. Forest Services, tree mortality rates have reached over 102 million trees since 2010 in California. With the rising mortality rate among these trees, the fire hazard in bark beetle territory has skyrocketed substantially, putting wildlife and nearby residencies at huge risks. A long-term issue is that the bark beetle brings in that if more and more trees continue to die, greenhouse gases like carbon will enter the atmosphere at larger rates due to having larger portions of our natural carbon observers being dead. 
Now, from an economic standpoint, the bark beetle is a nightmare for small towns that make a good chunk of their income off the beauty of the forests. Tourist areas like Mammoth Lake are facing serious issues because of the bark beetle. With thousands of acres of lodgepole and white bark pine being affected, the once lush green scenery is being turned into a landscape of dead and dying trees. California's forests are a nice tourist attraction and a really good source of income for local residencies in these areas. With the rising bark beetle epidemic, these towns will soon lose a good chunk of their money because of the declining tourism. And when a town loses its aesthetic peel, its property value will slowly decline, and that's a real issue for these small towns. Another economic issue is that removing dead trees and suppressing the bark beetle is very expensive and it's not 100% effective. Without a cheap way to stop the spread, towns are conflicted on what to do. For Mammoth, California, the way to solve this relies on your objective. Is it to protect public safety? Is it to protect a viewshed? Or a ski area? Each one of these objectives will have a different management plan with different costs, as stated by Mammoth Times. If locals can't agree on a plan, this problem will continue to grow. Now, on to the solutions for dealing with the bark beetle. As stated before, sadly, there is no 100% cheap, effective way to deal with the bark beetle problem. Currently, the solution most used is a simple one, which is to cut down the trees and use them in a variety of ways. One way is to turn those dead trees into firewood to be used around the house. Another way is to take the trees and turn them into mulch, which can be used to enrich soil on people's property. This method is quite as expensive as one can imagine, but it's better than the alternative, which is to use pesticides to kill the bark beetles. This method is not the greatest because, as one can imagine, it kills some but not all of the bark beetle, and it does serious harm to the environment. So that is why we have chosen the more eco-friendly solution, which is just to cut down the trees. As you can see, the bark beetle is an issue that needs to be addressed swiftly before it's too late. If we continue to let this happen, more and more trees will be affected, and ultimately, we will lose a large chunk of our forests. Our priority is to making sure that our trees don't weaken any further through fire suppressing chemicals and other harm chemicals within the air and other ones that we dump. It's not too late to save our forests. All we need is people to take action. This concludes our presentation. Thank you.